a minute to chime in. You know what to do. When you hit the video, go ahead and say, hey, baby. In your New Orleans voice, you hear me? Good morning to you all. God bless you. We're just going to give a minute for you all to chime in.
shall fulfill your vow, free will offer sheep. It has to be acceptable. There shall be no blemish therein. Listen to this. Somebody say no blemishes. Listen to this. It says blind or broken or maimed or having weaned or scurry or scabbed, ye shall not offer these unto the Lord, nor make an offering of fire by them on the altar of God. Why did he say on the altar of God? Somebody say, why did he say that? I'm reading from Leviticus chapter 22, verse 19 through 21. The Lord is concerned about the type of sacrifice you offer him. If you're rolling up into God's presence, and you tired and you don't really want to be there that's a lame sacrifice if you're if you rolling up into god's presence and you know you have sinned before god you cannot just roll up in god's presence you are offering a bad sacrifice if you come up in god's presence and you're angry at so and so or you just gossiped about such and such and you just did this that and the other you cannot roll up in God's presence. You are offering the wrong sacrifice. And what is your sacrifice that you offer before the Lord? He says in Romans, he says Romans 12, 1 and 2. He says, but present yourselves as a living sacrifice. Who is the Lord speaking to this morning? Somebody hit the chat and say living sacrifice. The Lord wants you to offer yourself as a living sacrifice, holy and pure. Oh, I'm going to harp on this for the whole year. So if you don't want to hear it, um, y'all saw the video. Uh, 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 unfollow me. Yes, God. You can do that right now because I'm going to give you this word. And I pray that you digest it. Somebody say digest it today. Don't just let it go into your hearing, but let it get inside of you. The priest had to eat the consecration offering because they had to become consecration. They couldn't just go on consecration as Apostle Joshua Smith would say, but they had to become consecrated. They had to live consecrated. Hallelujah. Somebody say live it. And in Leviticus 19, it says, you shall not offer, you shall not offer any sacrifice before God that has blemishes. Put living sacrifice on for me. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna follow this through all the way. You, it's, you cannot. You The Lord is saying you all have not offered. And, I'm, and this is not just you. Sister Rachel too. We have not offered the right sacrifice before the Lord. Because Leviticus says that the sacrifice that we offer before God should be without blemish the blood of jesus purifies you and gives you audience with god the father somebody said the blood gives me access but the way that you live makes that that access holy and pure but if you are living if you are living a double wicked a double standard wicked life you are offering god the wrong sacrifice many times i will get on here and I will talk to the praise and worship dancers. But today this video is for the body of Christ as a whole. The Lord gave me a word a few weeks ago. And he said, I'm calling you to the lukewarm state of the church. I'm calling you to the wicked body of Christ. And nowhere in scripture does God refer to um, sinners as, um, as, as, as his people. He always referred to the to the wicked when he's talking about lukewarmness because sinners are cold they're not even trying the lukewarmers are the ones that go to church every Sunday and jump and shout and fall out but they still live like a devil wrong sacrifice you still club you still drink you still dress half naked wrong sacrifice Leviticus chapter 22 and verse 20 says but whatsoever has a blemish, ye shall not offer, for it is not acceptable for you. Somebody say, whatever has a blemish, don't offer it. Whatever has a blemish, don't offer it. Whatever has a blemish, don't offer it in the name of Jesus. Happy birthday, Venetia. Whatever has a blemish, you know when you have a blemish. You know when you have crossed boundaries in the spirit. You know when you have
have violated the commandment of the Lord because we all have a conscience. We all have the Holy Spirit that convicts us unless you have seared your conscience because you live in a habitual state of sin. Oh, who is the Holy Spirit talking to? Somebody hit the chat and say, hear the word of the Lord this morning. You might be saying that the book of Leviticus is the Old Testament and we're under grace. Why is it that when the Bible was written, they didn't just do the New Testament? Why did they just, why didn't they just do the New Testament? Why was the Old Testament added? Because Jesus came to fulfill the law. He did not come to abolish it, but he came to fulfill the law. Somebody say Jesus fulfilled the law. God did not change his mind about how you are to offer a sacrifice. What sacrifice are you offering the Father this morning? Are you offering strange fire because you are not living a holy and a righteous life? I'm not saying that you're not making mistakes. I'm not saying that you are not having issues and hardships and things that you are overcoming. I'm talking to the person that willfully fornicates, have sex with somebody they're not married to, and say, oh, God, gonna forgive me. I'm under grace. God love me. Stop making excuses to offer the Lord the wrong sacrifice. Hit the chat and say, no more excuses. We cannot make any excuses. The Bible says in Matthew 24, 25, and 26, he talks about there's gonna be wars and rumors of wars. Do you not see what is happening in the Ukraine? The Lord is trying to get the, the body of Christ to wake up have to wake up and you are you have to come out of the stupor share this video somebody needs to hear what the Lord is saying in this hour we have offered the wrong sacrifices before the Lord and in scripture when you offer the wrong sacrifice you died in the Old Testament in scriptures in the Old Testament when you offer the wrong sacrifice before God you die when the priests went into the holy place they had a rope tied around their waist because if they were not right before God and they tried to offer the sacrifices and go into the most holy place, they died. And the rope was around them. They had bells and pomegranates on the bottom of their garments so they could make a melody, a sweet melody in the presence of God. But when they went in and they were not right and the melody went out, they knew that the Lord had struck them dead and they would pull them out by the rope that was tied around their waist because everybody could not go into the presence of God. Oh, who is the Holy Spirit ministering to this morning? I'm coming to you, somebody put this in the chat. From Leviticus chapter 19, verse, 20, verse uh, 19 through 22. You can no longer offer the Lord a strange fire. The grace and mercy of God. You are wearying and frustrating the grace and the mercy of God. And the Lord says, I'm not going to tarry with you long. He says, my church has to begin to offer the right sacrifice or we're going to begin to see the Ananias and Sapphira spirit hit the church. Somebody said the Ananias and Sapphira spirit is going to hit the church. That was a spirit of instant death. Oh, that was the spirit of instant death. We have seen a slow death, but the Lord is about to bring instant death because you have offered the wrong sacrifices on the altars of God. In verse 22, it specifically says, the blind, broken, maimed, or weaned, or scurry, or scab, you shall not offer before the Lord upon the altar. He specifically said on the altar, share this video with somebody, you better tag somebody, because right now we're getting on the altar of God and we're not living holy. We're getting on the altar of God and you are defiled and you are offering a strange fire before the Lord. And the Lord says, I see it. And the spirit of Ananias and Sapphira is about to hit my church. And you're going to see those drop dead before your eyes because they have not obeyed what I have commanded them in making the right sacrifice before me. We've played church for too long. We have, somebody put that in the chat. We have played with the things of God for too long. We've called the holy and the prof the holy profane and the profane holy. We have we have literally acknowledged evil and wickedness as good. 
And right now you see what is happening in the Ukraine because the Lord is trying to get the church attention. It's always about the church. It's always about the church. It's always, somebody say it's always about the church. The church has defiled the altar of God by offering the wrong sacrifice. Somebody say, stop offering the wrong sacrifice. Let me read this. I'm giving you Bible. I'm not giving you my opinion. Old Testament is just as justifiable and just as sturdy as the New Testament. Leviticus 9, uh, 22, verse 19 through 22. I'm going to read it in your hearing again because I'm going to echo the voice of the Lord. It says, ye shall not offer your own will. Uh, you shall offer at your own will a male without blemish of beeves, of sheep, or of goats. But whatsoever has a blemish, ye shall not offer, for it is not acceptable unto you. For whatsoever, whosoever offer a sacrifice, a peace offering unto the Lord, to accomplish this vow, or free offering of beeves or sheep, it shall be perfect to be acceptable. There shall be no blemish therein. Verse 22. He says, blind or broken or maimed or having wings, scurry or scab, you shall not offer on the altar of the Lord. The spirit of the Lord is saying you can no longer offer your faulty sacrifices. You can't bring these lives that are not holy and consecrated. You cannot bring these lives that are lukewarm and double-minded. You have to bring the right sacrifice before the Lord in this season. Do we want the wrath of God to fall on the church? Or do we want the mercy of God to come? Do we want the mercy? Somebody cry out in the comments and say, mercy. Cry out in the comments and say, mercy, Lord. Some, we need intercessors to begin to stand in the gap and cry out that the church would begin to offer a holy sacrifice unto the Lord. I see so many people making posts and commenting about talking about the church, talking about the church, talking about the church. But the Lord is asking for his church to repent. The Lord is asking his church, the bride of Christ, you and I, not the building, the people in the building. He's asking us to repent and turn away. He's saying, turn away from your wickedness. Turn away from your hypocrisy. Turn away from your double-minded and double standards. I noticed that the church has a double standard. It's okay for certain people to do certain things, but not others. I'm not going to get into that, but that's a double standard. Repent and turn away. Oh my, my. We cannot allow. We cannot. We want the church to have power. We want the church to raise the dead. We want people that came in in wheelchairs to rise up and walk. We want those that came in that are spiritually blind to have their eyes open. We want those that are coming in with infirmities to encounter supernatural healings. But the only way for the church to get its power back is that we offer the right sacrifice. You cannot offer the wrong sacrifice and expect the holy God to accept it. He said it got to be without spot, blemish, or wrinkle. Go to Revelations. He said that your garments must not be defiled. He said your garments cannot have spots, blemishes, or wrinkles. Spot, number one, you a liar. Spot, number two, you can't stand people. You hate on them. Spot, number three, you a slanderer. Everywhere you go, you backbiting. Spot, number four, you're envious because other people got things you don't have. It's just not your season yet. God is not being mean to you. It's not time for you because you might not be mature enough to handle what you're asking for. Spot number five, you just, you just have this thing where you just don't like people. You don't love people. And when they do you wrong, you feel the need to cut them off. But that was the one that God assigned to you for spiritual growth. These are spots and blemishes that defile us and make our sacrifice inappropriate. Somebody type inappropriate in the chat. Your sacrifice is inappropriate, inappropriate before God. If you all were going into the presence of, of the Lord in this condition, many of you would be dragged out by the rope, dead, because we are offering, thank God we're under grace and mercy. Thank God that we're under grace and mercy. 
Thank God we're under grace and mercy. Put that in the chat. Thank God that we're under grace and mercy, myself included. Thank God, because we will be dragged out by the rope because we're not offering the right sacrifice. When you go into the prayer closet, how are you entering? He said, enter in my, my, with thanksgiving and praise. Are you entering in with thanksgiving or are you entering in with your murmurings and your complaints? Are you dissatisfied with where God has you in your life right now? I want to be honest with you. I'm going through peer D hell. I got all kind of stuff happening in my life as God begins to transition me to walk in my full purpose and calling. I could be bitter and angry and offended at so many people, but I choose to be clean before God and understand that this is a part of his process. Are you choosing to be bitter? Are you choosing to be unforgiving? Are you choosing to be hated, hateful? Or are you choosing to avoid offense at every cost? Yes, it hurts when, when it's being done to you. Yes, the pain feels real. Yes, there are days when it's unbearable and you don't know how you're going to make it in your own ability. But I'm here to tell you that if you would consecrate yourself again and offer the right sacrifice before the Lord, he said healing is the children's bread. Put the air on. I'm burning up right now. I feel the fire of the Holy Ghost. Somebody need to share this video and tag somebody. I don't know what you're dealing with in your life right now. But I feel the Lord telling me to be transparent with you and letting you know that just because you see my post and just because you see all of the great things that are going on in my life does not mean that I'm not in the purification fire. Somebody say purification fire. The fire that purifies you. The fire that gets out the impurities. The fire that gets out everything that is not like God. In that fire, you have to be the right sacrifice. You see, the enemy will try to trick you and try to deceive you to put your mouth on things that will cause your sacrifice to be tainted. He will cause you to put your mouth on things and on people that will taint your sacrifice. But I'm telling you right now, I warn you by the grace and strength of God, do not put your mouth on it. This is God's process. This is God's purifying fire to make sure that you're offering the right sacrifice on the altar. Yes, it hurts. Come on, somebody said it hit it in the chat. It's not just me. Say, yes, it hurts. But Lord, even if you slay me, I'm going to trust you. I'm not going to abort my purpose. Somebody put that in the chat. I will not abort my purpose because it's difficult. I will not abort my purpose because it looks like everything is against me. I will not abort my purpose because the spirit of depression is trying to grip me. I will not abort my purpose. I will be a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. I will be pure before the Lord. Somebody say, I will, I will, I will, I will. You see, the enemy's job is to make it so hard and to make it so difficult that you abort and give premature birth and that the baby dies. But you cannot give premature birth right now. The baby must live because the, the baby is your purpose. The baby is who God called you to be. God, the baby is the assignment that the enemy does not want to come forth. Somebody say, I will, I will deliver full term. I will not deliver before the 40 weeks of gestation. <laughs> come on, it's not just me on this video. It's not just me, but there's some of you that God is saying you're sacrificing this season it has to be without spot or blemish. It can't be tainted with slander. It can't be tainted with why they doing this to me. It can't be tainted when they told me one thing and they did another. It cannot be, I told them about shy It cannot be tainted. Would you offer the Lord 
it cannot be tainted. He said you cannot present with a with spot, wrinkle, or blemish the offering that you bring on the altar of God. It has to be pure. It has to be holy. And it has to be consecrated. God is letting the affliction come to purify you. He says, I'm putting you in the center of the purification fire. And I'm turning up the heat. Who is the Holy Spirit ministering to? No abortions. No abortions because of depression. You can't miscarry this because of fear. You cannot miscarry this. Oh, Somebody say, I bind the spirit of miscarriage and abortion. You cannot lose the baby right now because the depression is trying to overtake you. You cannot miscarry because the fear is so great. You cannot miscarry because you're in the midst of great confusion. This is the purification fire. Ashley, Ashley, you cannot miscarry right now. I know that you have been going through pure D hell, baby girl. But you cannot miscarry right now. This is the purification fire, Ashley. I know it's hard. I know you're struggling and I know some days you feel like giving up, Ashley. Oh, but you're in the midst of the purification fire. And the Lord is telling me to decree and declare that you will give a you will give full birth and you will go to full term. And despite what it feels like, you will not give birth prematurely. You will deliver at the 40 term mark. And that when you deliver, it will be in health and good strength. Hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. I bind the spirit of depression. I bind the spirit of depression on you right now. That's trying to cause you to give up and faint in the day of adversity. You will not give up. The Lord is strengthening your hind legs. Like he has hind legs on deer that can jump over every obstacle. The Lord says I am strengthening your hind legs. That you will jump over barriers and obstacles. So that you can give birth healthy and whole in the name of Jesus. You're in the purification fire. You will give birth in good health. You're not giving up here. There's midwives and I, I, I didn't understand. But you have, you have Benisha, you have me that we're carrying you in the spirit. We're carrying you. We're carrying you along with our own burdens and hardships. We're carrying you in the spirit and you will give birth to term. Can somebody hit the chat and say, Ashley will go full term. Somebody, I'm hot. This is not the air condition. It's not the air condition on me. It's not the air. Somebody tell, somebody speak it over Ashley. We have a life in the power of our tongue. That's the air condition. She will have a full delivery. Speak it over her. If it was your word, you would be speaking and running and jumping and shouting. But can, can you celebrate? If you celebrate Ashley, God will do it for you. I hear the Lord say, if you do it for Ashley, if you celebrate Ashley, I'll do it for you. God is doing it for you if you celebrate her. You see, sometimes you can get a blessing by celebrating someone else. I want you to go back and I want you to read and, and ponder and study and meditate on Leviticus 22, verse 19 through 22. And hear what the Lord is saying. Shalanda. Simone will not, she will not falter. Simone will not break. Ah, Simone is right on track for what God is doing. She's right on track. She's right on track. Somebody needs to share this video. I know that it seems bleak and it seems grim, 
But the Lord is saying, no man that put their trust in me shall ever be made ashamed. He said, no man. We know man is a unisex term here. No man that put their trust in me shall ever be made ashamed. You hear me, Shalanda? The Lord is saying, you will not be made ashamed. This trial is necessary. He said, this hardship that you're going through, it's necessary. He said, but I will not make you ashamed. Come on, somebody, put the chat, put it in the chat. So that, um, that Shalanda will not be made ashamed. Put it in the chat. Come in agreement, speak it out of your mouth. Speak it out of your mouth. You will not be made ashamed. Simone will come through this. Her purpose is on the line. God's will for this child's life is on the line. And she shall come forth in the name of Jesus. We decree and declare it. It does not matter what we see out of our natural eye. It does not matter. Because we see through the eyes of the Spirit. And we see that this child is fulfilling the plan and the purpose of God. Oh. Simone is fulfilling the plan and the purpose of God. We do not move in the realm of sight. We move in the realm of what God says. Ingrid, you are waiting. You are waiting on God for something. And it seems like it's never going to happen for you. And the Lord is saying to tell you, Ingrid, that in due season you shall reap if you faint not. Ingrid, I want you to decree and declare that I will reap if I faint not. I declare it out of your mouth. Everybody declare it with me over Ingrid. Ingrid will reap if she faint not. That tells me that if the Lord is saying, if you faint not, that there are some things that are about to happen in your life that can possibly cause you to faint and miss this opportunity with God. But you cannot faint. Ingrid, you will, you will not faint in the name of Jesus. You will not faint in the name of Jesus. You will not faint. Decree it and declare it. We have to say what God is saying. I thank you. I thank you right now. God is God is God is a God of conditions. Don't need to put the cross back on. They gotta put it on you. God is a God of conditions. There's always an if involved. If you confess from your mouth and believe in your heart. If. There's always conditions. There's always, because somebody said there's always conditions. I beg you, if, I, if the Lord has used me to prophesy a word over you in this video, war over it. It's your responsibility to war over the prophecy or it shall not come to pass. How do you war over it? You take that thing to the prayer closet and you pray it until it manifests. You pray it until you see it before your very eyes. You pray it until it's done. If you get weary and faint in the midst of praying, you're not gonna get it because the devil is gonna cause all hell to break loose to make sure you don't get it. Hi. I'm gonna get off because I can feel that the Spirit of the Lord has lifted, amen. I can feel that the Spirit of the Lord has lifted. Um, I'm asking you all to sow a $22 seed you can go to my link tree that's pinned in the comment section of this video. If one word touched you, if one word strengthened you in your faith this morning, if, if you got a prophetic word, sow into it. Sow into it. Hello, Michaela. I promise you, go back and watch this video, Michaela. The Lord is going to bless you, sister. Go back and watch this video. Go back. It's going to resonate in your spirit. Everybody on here, I charge you right now to share this video. Tag somebody in it that you know needs to hear the word from Leviticus 22, 19 through 22. Go back and watch it. But I ask you to click my link tree. There's multiple ways to give. You can give through PayPal. You can 
give through Square, you can give through Zelle, you can give through um, Cash App. Go ahead and um, and sow your seed, $22. Sow your seed and bless the Lord, amen. Sow your seed and bless the Lord because of what the Lord has released this morning, amen. I told you all um, that this is what I'm going to be doing. As the Lord released me, you'll see more and more prophetic words coming forth. You'll see more and more Bible teaching coming forth. I'm trying to be careful and be sensitive to move with the Holy Spirit. But I want you to put your seed on it. I'm not going to make this a long, drawn-out thing. Those that have sown, I do want to give this testimony. Uh, I had a sister, a sister that messaged me after I prophesied over her that the word came to pass and that the Lord had basically given her back 10 times what she sold on the video. So I know that God is able to do it and I know I'm good ground because I tithe and sow off of the seed that you give me. You don't have to worry about it going, uh, uh, your seed uh, not returning back a harvest to you. You don't have to worry about that here. Amen. Ashley says, bless you woman of God. That was my cry to God this morning. I wasn't in Milwaukee with you, Ashley. That was the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Just hit the floor. Hallelujah. Thank you for pushing me in the spirit. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. I thank God for you, Ashley. You will not abort. And depression will not hold you hostage. You will deliver full term. Amen. You keep saying it. When you feel bad, when you get discouraged, you keep saying it. I'm, I'm going full term with this one. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If you're just joining, go back and watch the replay. Wisconsin. I'm so Wisconsin Dales on sabbatical. Glory to God. <laughs> ah, glory to God. Glory to God, Ashley. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Don't forget, put your seed on it. Put your seed on it. Sow your seed if the word blessed you this morning. Sow your seed. Hallelujah. Go ahead and click the link tree. Uh, scroll all the way to the bottom of the link tree and there are all of our, our given outlets. I do want to talk to you all. If some of you want to partner with me in ministry, you can click the, the link in the link tree that says partnership. Ingrid, my cash app is dollar sign YPDC. Just like the end of the link tree is dollar sign YPDC. Can somebody please put that in the chat section for me? Dollar sign YPDC. Um, if you go to the link tree, there's an option where you can become a partnership start as low as $5. There's a $5 partnership, a $10 partnership, and a $25 partnership where it'll auto-draft every month from your account where you can partner with us to get the word of the Lord out. Amen. I just want to thank you all for being on the video. Um, let me see if I can put it in there for you. Thank you all for sewing. I want to pray, pray for y'all on the video. Thank you, Hashina. There's my cash app. Um, I want to, uh, I want to pray for y'all before I get off of this video because prayer is powerful. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for those that have been on the video today that they will not offer the wrong sacrifice on the altar. They will not offer the wrong sacrifice in the prayer closet, but they will allow you to cleanse us of all spots, blemishes, or wrinkles that we will be pure and holy and acceptable in your sight. I pray over those that got a prophetic word that they will warn over the prophecy until they see it come to pass. I pray, God, that you would show us any areas of our lives where we have not offered you the right sacrifice so that we won't do it again in the future, but that we could understand what the will of the Lord is. We don't want to be like the priests that you have to drag us out by the rope from the temple because we've come in your presence the wrong way. So, Father, I'm asking you to help us to get this thing right before you. Help us that we would get it right, God. And I thank you for your mercy. I thank you for your grace that even though we are in the New Testament and we are under grace, you're giving us the opportunity to get it right. And I bless your name for it. In Jesus' name, look all go back and watch this video. Share it on your timeline and, and, and tag 